You know, great music can be an incredible motivator. It can make you feel alive, bursting with energy, ready to attempt the impossible, to run faster, to jump higher, to exceed your wildest dreams. It's amazing how music does this to us in a way that almost nothing else in life can. In order to satisfy this changing paradigm, composers and conductors are always challenging musicians to reach new heights in performance, to enlarge the boundaries of their technique and our imagination. Success in today's rapidly changing and highly challenged fiscal environment is predicated upon our ability to be creative. So what exactly is creativity? I remember a wonderful story about the famous painter and sculptor Pablo Picasso who found a discarded old rusty bicycle out behind his house. He took it home, he looked at it for a bit, and then he removed the seat and the handlebars and welded them together into a magnificent bull's head. A great Hungarian scientist put it this way, and Maestro Critelli referred to that earlier in a different form. Discovery consists of looking at the same thing everyone else does, but perceiving it, seeing it differently. Now you have to be skilled motivators to create the exponential potential of the many individuals under your supervision. And let me emphasize the importance of positive reinforcement in the process of developing a creative corporate culture with a story from personal experience. It involves our son, David, who's now a film producer in Hollywood. This took place when he was five years of age. I do a lot of traveling around the world, and my wife, who's an attorney, decided to have our living room re-wallpapered and white, beautiful white silk moiré paper. The paper hangers had left. All the furniture was in the middle of the room under a tarp. And little David came, and he not, saw not a newly wallpapered room, but rather a canvas waiting for his creativity. He went upstairs, got his indelible marker pens, and came back down. Within five to seven minutes, my wife appeared on the scene and she was horrified. She was shocked. And she admonished him with those time-worn words that moms occasionally use with their sons. Wait till your dad gets home. Well, I told you I was getting there this evening and I was immediately ushered into the scene of the crime. I looked at his creation. I turned to my wife and I said, you know, he's really gifted. <laughs> well, you can imagine she was about to kill me. But we made an inspired decision. You all know that we don't go to school to learn to be parents, and sometimes we get it right. And on this one occasion, we did. Instead of punishing him, we said, David, up in the playroom, you have four gorgeous white walls. And we have an old Victorian house, so they're very high ceilings. We got him a ladder, and we got him some white paint and a roller, and we said, look, go crazy, enjoy yourself, create. And anything you're not happy with, well, you can just roll over it and recreate. And as a consequence of that decision, David earned all of his spare money for college by painting murals on people's walls. Now, you've probably been wondering what the contents of these boxes you found on your seats were. This is the time to open them up, please, and go crazy. You're listening to the sounds of disorganized chaos. Okay, I'm going to ask you to stop, please. Thank you. We've divided you into five groups. So I'd like you to look down. Please have the house lights up full so people can actually see. Look down on the surface of the tone bar. The last eight seats going towards that wall, you should have a letter D on your tone bar. Okay, just those people with the letter D I'm talking to right now, although it refers to everybody. Now, I'm sure all of you have seen conductors on television and, and in performances with orchestras, and you said to yourselves, this is easy, I could do that. I just move around with, to, you know, move your arms to the music. But there really is a language of communication, and the most important thing that we do is tell people what the tempo is and when to start playing. And we do this through a physical breath called an upbeat. And it starts here, and there's a breath, breathe, play. And we all play in a center point of our body, sort of towards our belly button, called the ictus. So I'm going to ask everybody with a D tone bar to sound your tone bar once on my ictus. You ready? Breathe. Not beyond excellence, but we'll do it one more time. Okay, just those people with a D. Now, the next three people along this aisle and the next four people on this aisle, or is it four and three? I can't really remember. If you look down at your tone bar, however, you should have an E. Okay? Those with E tone bars, sound them once, please. And. Good. 
So we have the first five notes of a D major scale, for those of you with perfect pitch, and it goes like this. Very good. Now with those five notes, we can play 900 years of musical history. Now I need to rehearse you for a moment uh, in one passage uh, before we play it with the orchestra. So here we go. You know, as salespeople, there comes a moment in any pitch where if you say another word, you're starting to buy it back, right? <laughs> Musically, we have reached that point. Okay, so I'm going to ask for the house lights to be turned down, and the orchestra is going to play the introduction. We're not going to do the whole thing. This is the K-Tel version, lasts only about four minutes. And when it's your turn to come in and play with great verve, enthusiasm, and symphony with us, I will turn to conduct you. May we have the video, please?